How does one become a more positive person? Let me begin this thought with a story that to me is very, very important. I taught for many, many years and I continue to teach at a, a Baal Tshuva girls' school at Machon Chana, Machon Liyadus. And um, young people in general, and young Baal Tshuva in particular, tend to have the kind of honesty that's brutal, that's painful, that's disturbing. You know, like the child who says the emperor has no clothes. So over the course of my years as a teacher, I've had moments that were very uncomfortable because somebody simply said the truth. So uh, here's a story. I'm sitting in class, must be eight years ago, nine years ago, seven years ago. And we had one of those spare periods where we didn't have anything specific to do. So uh, the girls were asking questions and it became a discussion. So one of the students says to me very sincerely and very emotionally, Rabbi, I decided that the meaning of working on myself means wishing I would be better. Rabbi, I decided that working on myself means wishing I would be better. What her point was, if you go into the dormitory of any yeshiva, everybody is growing. Everybody is involved in spirituality and in introspection and so on, particularly by the tshuva. And this is a dormitory full of girls who are very motivated to grow. And when you stick around long enough, you start to realize that you don't really change. You certainly don't change that much and you certainly don't change that quickly. So her discovery was that this whole thing about growth and change is, is not true. Nobody changes. Nobody grows. They fantasize. They wish. They imagine. And it was a terribly uncomfortable moment. It was an uncomfortable moment for me. It was an uncomfortable moment for her. And it was a comfortable moment for everyone sitting in the room. And she's right. But she's wrong. She's right because growth and change is not simple. But she's wrong because growth and change is really possible. You're asking a, a psychological question, but a psychological question which has a lot to do with faith. It's not a psychological question that's understood in the psychological sense alone, because then you wouldn't be asking me, I'm not a psychologist. You're asking me this question in the spirit of the fact that Yiddishkeit in general, and Hasidus in particular, and the Rebbe even more particularly, obsess over Ivdu HaSashem Besimcha. You want to live, be joyous. And the reasons, of course, is joy is rooted in faith, and joy is the anchor of faith. Joy is the source of energy. Motivation for life comes from joy. So the question is, how can I make myself into a happier person? And it's the same thing as, how can I change anything? How can I change any bad habit? How can I change anything in myself? And of course, the answer is that it requires work, hard work, consistent work. The beginning of that work is the genuine recognition that you lack in this area and the true desire to acquire it. In other words, if a person wants to become a more positive person, they have to admit to themselves that positiveness is a good thing and that they're negative, that they're pessimistic. And then they need to create practical exercises, practical exercises to be more positive. What I'm trying to say is you cannot change how you feel, but you can change how you speak and you can change how you think, which will have an enormous effect on how you feel. For example, for example, let's assume, and I'm going to, this is a practical question, somebody's asking, how can I become a more positive person? Okay, let's talk about it. How many times a day do you say something pessimistic and negative? 50. It, it happens without us even being aware of it. It's just human nature to be pessimistic. Whether it's self-pity, or it's fear, or it's the lowest common denominator, or what's written in the newspaper. There's so many reasons to be pessimistic. If a person wants to be positive and optimistic, they have to stop saying pessimistic things. Now, of course, when a person decides I'm not going to say any pessimistic things, that's as useful as saying you're not going to breathe air. It, it comes out of you. But you can make yourself aware of it. Every time you say something negative, put a dollar in the pushka, or a quarter in the pushka. Or go back to the person you told that pessimistic things to and say something positive. Now, oftentimes life is hard and oftentimes things are happening to us personally that make us emotionally pessimistic. But you know what? Looking at it in a good way, 
and seeing the positive side of it, or at least saying the positive side of it, is not going to make it any worse. It could make it better. So if a person is serious about becoming a positive person, the issue is, number one, recognize the value in being a positive person. Number two, recognize the degree of negativity that we live with. And number three, understand you cannot change the emotion, but you can change your actions. Don't be around negative people. Take the positive side in an argument. When people talk about whether the world is good or bad, you find the good. And get into the habit of focusing on the positive and speaking positive. Because the glass is half full. And you do have the choice of saying half full or half empty. It's part of the basic human condition to be marashchede, to be a behema, to see the glass as half empty. You at least verbally see the glass as half full. And if you acclimate yourself, if you habitually do this, if you as a ritual make it your business to be positive, to see the God in the world, to see good in people, which is really good in people is God in people. Good in the world in general is God in the world because a world, a world without God is a terrible place. People without God are terrible people. You, you will find yourself becoming a more positive person and maybe even believing it. So this is something which is realistic and practical but not simple and easy. And it's work. It's work. It's a serious decision. And of course you become the strange one because if you're intelligent and mainstream, you have to be pessimistic. That's just the way of the world. But you decide you don't want to be a part of that. You want to be a part of something higher. So you choose that path. And one final thing I'm going to say is that I think that when it comes to joy, fake it till you make it works. You know, you can't fake tzaddik to be tzaddik. You can't, you can't fake from to be from. But you can fake happy to become happy. When you make it your business to always come across to other people as positive and happy, you will become a more positive person and you will certainly create more positive around you. And the underlying point is that we do nobody a favor more than ourselves when we choose to live a positive life, which basically means to live with a conscious awareness that I'm living in Hashem's world and Hashem is good and His world is good and my life is good and my family is good and my community is good. It's not bad with a few redeeming aspects. It's good with a few challenges. What's the difference between those two perspectives? Nothing. And everything.